Georgia's primary is tomorrow, but due to the coronavirus pandemic, voting looks a little bit different this year, although hundreds lined up for the last day of early voting on Friday. According to the Secretary of State, more than 800,000 Georgians have mailed in their ballots. Joining us is 11 Alive political analyst Dr. Andra Gillespie and Mike Hassinger. Good evening to both of you. Mike, we begin with you. COVID-19 providing unprecedented challenges to this year's election. Yes, it has. It's going to be a lot more reliant on uh, mail-in voting. Obviously, we've seen huge, huge numbers of absentee ballots by mail being sent in, which means that election night results are going to be slower in coming uh, because they will. it takes longer to process those absentee ballots, longer to count them. Uh, I think voters are going to see a very different experience in social distancing while waiting in line to cast ballots. Uh, they may see uh, younger and different poll workers who are not their usual sort of um, 65, 75 and older volunteers, but rather um, more motivated young folks um, who will, of course, all be, we hope, wearing masks and lots of hand sanitizer and lots of social distance. And speaking of young people, thousands protesting for racial equality and an end to police brutality in the United States. Dr. Gillespie, what effect do you think that the protests all across America will have on this year's election? I know that's a very sweeping question, but let's try and focus that on what you think it's going to mean in our area. Um, so in the long term, I, I you know, do uh, predict that, especially because of mobilization, um, these young people are going to be encouraged to register to vote and to vote in November. What the immediate term impact is going to be is actually much more uncertain. Um, there is no doubt that there are some people who are brand new to politics who have been um, incensed by what happened to George Floyd, who have now taken to the streets and who have now become politically active and aware. That didn't happen in time for them to register to vote for this election. So we might not see that big impact um, on tomorrow's election, but we could see it if there's a runoff. And I think we will definitely see some impact in November. Mike, one of the big races tomorrow <laughs> is to decide a Democratic Party challenger to David Perdue. What are you looking for as a Republican in terms of that result? And what should Senator Perdue's biggest concern be as we roll toward November? I think the biggest concern facing the Purdue campaign right now is uh, an outright win by one candidate without a need for a primary runoff. Uh, primary runoffs, partisan primary runoffs are usually, and, and I have to put a big caveat on all of these statements now, um, since 2018, um, usually partisan primary runoffs are, the, are decided by the most faithful, the most ardent wing of whichever party. Um, I'm hearing that uh, there is a poll or a recent poll showing that John Ossoff was within one point of winning it outright. Um, he's been in that position before, however. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But a very strong candidate who uh, wins on the Democratic side um, and takes the nomination can roll momentum all the way through November, and that would worry um, Senator Perdue in a state that's trending towards purple. Dr. Gillespie, if you read anything nationally, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the New York Times, uh, the Dallas newspaper, Chicago, Los Angeles, everybody seems to be in agreement that the Republicans hold on the Senate probably is a tenuous one at this point. As you've taken a look at some numbers, some of your research, what's your view of Democrats flipping one of these Senate seats here in November? Well, it, the national climate um, isn't necessarily the most favorable towards Republicans right now. So we're saying this in June, not knowing exactly what the conditions are going to be in November. And um, nationally, Republicans were more vulnerable this year than they were in 2018 in that there were more Republican held seats that were up. And some of those seats are held up in increasingly competitive states. So the Georgia seats are um, interesting because this state has become more competitive uh, because uh, Donald Trump hasn't done himself in very many favors in the next week. So it's a question of whether or not his coattails are long or short or if they matter at all. And then in the second um, Senate race in particular, uh, you have what looks like it's going to be a three-way race between um, a Democrat and then the two leading Republicans, the incumbent senator who doesn't appear to be very popular, and then a Republican insurgent um, who has a really strong base. And so it's a question of um, if there's a lot of anti-Trump fervor, whether or not Republicans would actually be able to hold on to that second uh, Senate seat in Georgia as well. So all eyes will be on Georgia for those Senate races at the very least. Dr. Andrew Gillespie, Mike Hassinger, 
Thank you very much. We appreciate your observations and your view on what we can expect on the big vote. And we will talk to you Thanks. in the days ahead. Thank